Okay. There we go. There we go. Do you know what I did? I turned it off and turned it back on again. So for the cost of a ton of money to get a better mixer for streaming, I have more reliability issues. Awesome. And lost whatever viewers were coming into the stream at that point. Awesome. <laughs> uh... Fun, fun, fun. And almost 20 minutes of the time I have available to me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm returning my new microphone, it refuses to charge. Huh. Oh, you use a headset mic or something? Um, keep making spreadsheets to look at housing. Probably adding way too much log logic into a decision that is inherently not that logical. Time to move again. Ah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you said Plantronics. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah. Moving is never easy. Moving is never easy. I would hate to do it now. <laughs> I've got way too much stuff. That's 600 ish more a month to own. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ownership in the long term is, is a better bet for certain. So. Okay. So I have to today try and figure out how to. So I realized yesterday I went to write the stories for, for what I'm going to try and work on today. I'll be doing some uh, semantic kernel stuff. Um. So I went to write some stories around getting the basis of this started and, and thinking about, okay, what do I want to do? Is this a prototype or is this actually going to be my application? And I think it's going to be my application. I just need to do some cleaning up as I go. I don't think the code's in that bad a shape or that far away from where I actually want it to be that that's not impossible. But the challenge lies in some of the early decisions I need to I need to change how I do uh, tenant management, right? If we're going to do this for real, and I need to learn some things along the way. So I think we're going to do draw dial. diagram. Diagram, um, new tenant workflow. So when I say tenant, I mean a, a an entity with users and associated boards and teams, etc. Right? It's a separation of data. It is um, uh, no, no. I, I don't want to use identity server. Um, I'm not going into that depth at this point. Um, if I want to write my own identity stuff, then um, the only way I'm doing that is if I have other people helping me with the project. So for now, we'll use Auth0. So the flow here, I'm not going to try to actually create a real flow chart because I need to, I need to learn again which 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 shapes represent which things. Um, 
so they're not a user they are a potential customer right so a potential customer comes to the site they sign up sign up involves um Sign up involves um, uh, customer name and email, and it involves um, company name and address. And that's all part of that, technically. So when they sign up, um, is the company name plus address unique, right? Because um, Smith and Co. development team at 123 Main Street, Albuquerque is not Smith and Co. development team at um, 456, you know, Houston, Texas, right? They're not the same. They are different companies, even though they share the same company name, right? So, and I've got that piece generally working in the controversial SQL store procedure layer, which is one of the things I want to discuss as I go forward with this. So I have a routine search for tenant, right? And this removes all non-alphas um, from the uh, string, right? And actually, it should remove all non-alpha numerics from being true, because if I do Smith one and Smith two, they're the same company, right? Um, so I need to change that pattern to be alpha numeric, non-alpha numerics. By the way, I have the search, and if you enter just a name, if line one is null, then we're assuming that we're just working on company name. Well, we we do we do this in two ways. Um, it's it's essentially unique by name and address. It's not keyed on it in any way, right? But um, this tenant table. I'm not keying on it. No, I'm not using that data to key. Um, did I restart my machine? I must have restarted my machine. That's interesting. It keeps this stuff in memory, but I must have rebooted the machine yesterday. So a tenant, going back to draw, a tenant is company name plus address, right? The user signing up for that doesn't have to be... Um, doesn't have to be um, new. That person could be a, a, a member of another tenant, right? Um, so that's a possibility. Um, so I don't care about that part, but on the new, on a potential customer, so this is a potential customer that they have never signed up, right? So the customer name and email is new. The company name and address is new, right? Is it is it unique? Yes, it is. Um, then um, we register a tenant because we've got to hold that information somewhere, right? That that is valid. Um, we then um, register a user, right? And when we register the user, we um, register with auth0, right? 
And here, right now, I publish event created. Right? So that is my event. That is the, you know, this tenant was created. So the problem is that's wrong. Right? That, this is the wrong part. Right? Um, I shouldn't tell the rest of my system that the tenant is created unless I've confirmed the account. Right? So this tenant should go into a holding pattern. The challenge here is if I'm already a user, right? If I, if I am a user in the system already and I'm signing up, I need to fire off something to make them confirm that. Not necessarily wait, right? But I don't want to. I don't want to allocate resources unless someone wants that information, right? So again, the the user or the the potential customer comes to the site. They enter a company name. They enter their name. They enter their email. They enter an address, and they hit go, right? On the screen, it would notify them, hey, please check your inbox for a confirmation email. You know, this is, please click the link in the attached email. When they click that attached email link, that would trigger the actual initialization of the tenant, right? Because I'm going to capture the information in the tenant DB, right? That's going to be captured, right? Verified or active, right? So... When this first starts, verified, false, active, false. Right. Um, verified, true. When it verifies, verified, true, active, true. Right. And if we want to deactivate a tenant, active, false. So this this tenant management would would capture that information. It wouldn't be completely lost. But what happens is when, um, right, yes. So the idea is to confirm that we want to do this because right now, when I, when I fire tenant created, I hit the work item consumers with that tenant created and initialize a tenant in Couchbase, right? Now, if I was paying for resources, I wouldn't want to do this if people were spamming the signup site, right? I wouldn't want to be allocating all this resource for no good reason, because even if it's a couple of hundred K allocated per tenant created in Couchbase, I'm still creating those collections. So I don't want to do that. Right? So I want to tie this to confirmation of, yes, I actually do care. I mean, it's not like it's infallible. It's not like it's perfect, right? They could still click something and, and not go through with it. But it is a way of gating that. And also kicking off other processes, right? So when they when they register, it won't just be this one. Every system that needs to know about the tenant created will pick that up and do something with it, right? Whether it be initializing, whether it be capturing that that information, because the tenant created comes with the tenant created event has the name and the tenant identifier, which is all it cares about, right? Um, Now, I might add more information to this, but yeah. You know, looking at house locations really makes me question why my town built five grocery stores on the same road. <laughs> huh? City planning is an art form, right? Or town planning. So I need to kind of figure out what is possible. Seems like a lot. Uh, I need to figure out what is possible um, with regard to Auth0, right? What can, I know that I can get a... Uh, what can I do? Okay, let's go and look at all zero. I shouldn't reveal anything 
on this because also you just do a pretty good job of um, blocking things off. <laughs> Lull yourself to sleep with the sound of jet engines. <laughs> okay, so off pipeline rules have been deprecated. Right, they they've been gone for ten days. So actions are the way now. Right. So when I um when I log in. I actually set a custom claim for the tenant and I get the user metadata tenant. This is the selected tenant. This is how I trigger. This is how I capture. Hi, Desidious. Thank you for the look. I appreciate it. Hope you're well. Um, so this is how I capture who I'm logged into. Right? I'll hold this on the actual um, user themselves. So when, when they go to log in, if they actually are a member of multiple tenants, it will prompt them to say, hey, which tenant do you want to log into? Because we don't have a t current tenant set. When they log out, it will remove this token um, from from their, their user account. Um, this seemed like the most logical way of handling uh, tenancy in terms of, so the user has a list of the tenants that they're allowed to access, just the IDs. And the user has a currently selected tenant and this gets passed into the token so when they log in i know which tenant they're associated with and i can pass that forward all the time but i can use other flows right so post user registration what happens afterwards um post change password what happens afterwards i can trigger some things it looks like uh, machine to machine this is i can intercept things um in the, the API layer. So I'm thinking it's something like here. I don't know what it would be though, right? Um, if this is a callback, if there's something like that, or a, um, a webhook. Hook, no, something like that. Um, you can create custom. Right, so I can go here, go to custom, add an action. Uh, no. Build custom, here you go. So I can say, okay, uh, post user registration. Um, and I can do things in here. I don't know what things I can do right this second, but I can do things. So maybe that's how I do it. Um, branding universal login so that's allowing me to configure how i do the login screen i don't need to worry about that by this second i'm not panicked about that universal login experience login i can control the page um custom login page must be disabled when pass keys used and that makes sense so i can change the way the page lays out um password reset again i can customize those pieces um not too concerned about that right the second um and i can customize the tokens balance of it but that's not what i need yeah that's fine so the challenge is when i log in to this right i'm pending verification so I'll, i will receive an email and that email will um I suppose what i should do for the stream is sign up for a another email account just so that i have a an email i can log into and not show any personal information that would probably be the smarter thing to do right I'll worry about that later though so here you go, there's my user metadata. So when I register the tenant, it will actually record the tenants that I'm currently associated with on my app metadata. And my user metadata will be my currently selected tenant. So this this should always be in there. And it's not validated through here, it's validated through the application still, right? You, you have to be um, allowed to access the tenant. So I will be putting in some layers of 
validation that the tenant ID that I pass in is actually valid and not just some random GUI that someone's intercepted and put in place. And that you're and the permissions match, right? Um it's not totally infallible. I'm gonna learn that's kinda of my favorite word of the last couple of days. Um but it, it's it's something that I'm going to have to uh um learn a little bit more about as I go. So um auth zero callback on confirmed email account email templates okay that's that's where it's yeah okay so branding email templates um template enabled right so i do see this email Welcome email we can fire. Uh, change password. This email will be sent whenever the user requests to change password. So, um, one thing I can't remember how to do. Um, all zero change. Uh, Change password on first login. Log logging. Change password on verifying email. these hooks so hooks are not I think hooks are going away as well off pipeline hooks hooks have been deprecated as well yeah hooks and rules have been deprecated flows is the new way of doing it but flows seems very limited in how to do it so what this does is Go to hooks in your auth zero, click the create hook, give the hook a name, select post user registration. Okay, so it can be done still. And then auth client request change password email. So the suggestion there was what we do is we go into branding, go into uh, email templates, we disable verification email, right? We don't allow any, any of those. Um, Auth zero's UI generally has an issue in that, like sometimes you'll save and sometimes you won't, and that's one where it's just not saved, right? Because if I go back in there now, it's disabled. Okay, so then if we go into actions and library, and we create a custom action, and that is, uh, um. Go to email, email templates, toggle off status on the verification email. Um, go to hooks. Okay, so now this should be um, post user registration. Yeah, post user registration. Um, trigger um, password. Reset email. Okay, so we create this hook, this this trick, this uh, thing. So on that, now we got to figure out if the other stuff is possible, right? Because they've they've auth client, right? Add your domain here. You can find your domain from add your clients client ID there. Okay, and that is going to require auth zero. And then we would 
do something like that. Now that's challenging because that doesn't have a callback. API API dot event dot let's see. Uh using custom action to trigger auth zero email reset. Let's see if that's possible. We're probably an ad starts in two minutes. I apologize um, for anyone watching that does not have Twitch Turbo or is subscribed. Um, hopefully running ads prevents pre-rolls, which gets people into the stream and able to see the content sooner. So that is my, uh, my reasoning. Okay, so this looks like this might be able to trigger this. So <laughs> let's try it that way. So that suggestion is right, but they don't. They don't include Axios. Oh yeah, they do. Axios. Um, so this is, let's say your domain, they mean, why doesn't it know the domain if it knows my client ID and the user ID of the user that's post registered? That's that. That's that. That. Sorry, that was just upsetting me. Uh, and that is that. So. Okay, that's going to be what's that domain going to be settings. Liquids com, I think, is the domain there. Uh, let's deploy that. It should validate. Yep, yeah, it's right. so now we go to the flows, go to post user registration. Now I can go here and I can insert that there. Right, so now that should trigger something. Whether it will or not is a totally different thing. Um, if I go to monitoring logs and then I go over here and I start the application up. So I should be able to register a user now using my common email pattern and that will, that will trigger what I need. Okay, so the app is up and running. I can start Insomnia. Again, apologies to anyone who just had to sit through ads. Great, I still feel, I do feel guilty about having to like running ads, but the I think the benefits outweigh the, you know, Um, okay, so 
John Smith, John S. So now in my current form of this application, this will register a new tenant. It will fire the events. It will create the couch based system. It will fire off the email. It will fire, fire off the registration or it'll fire off the, the event towards zero to register the user. In theory. Just looks like it might be more theory than actual practice today. And a lot more theory. So if we go to users, no, it's not registering that user yet. So something's timing out. Timeout was reached. Uh, stop. Kafka is definitely more temperamental in its startup. I'm hoping that wasn't the cause of that then. Right, because yeah, project number twelve is there. Oh, nice. That's a that's quite the jumping seed. Um, but either way, it didn't send it didn't add the user right because it crashed uh, publishing the event. So. Auth zero, uh, so I'm using a pipeline. No, I'm using a notification. That notification must be serial. So the first thing it's trying to do is publish the event. And then it's going to create the user. So did it create the user? No, it didn't create the user. So it tried to publish the event and handle that event before it tried to get to the user component of the application. So again, that's another reason why some of this stuff needs to be disconnected is because some of these things should not tie up the others. So let's try that once more. Let's do 13. There you go, that looks healthier. So that created 13. That created John Smith over here. John Smith should be registered. There's John Smith, right? And John Smith is pending still, which is interesting because it shouldn't do the verification. Because the email, unless it's because I'm not marking it as verified, I probably have to mark it as verified. If we go to logs, failed post user registration hook, okay. Module not found, cannot find module Axios require stack. There you go, so that's, that's an issue. Unfortunately, this is going to take a lot of tinkering to test, right? So let's go back to that that action. I go back to my library, custom. Uh, we're going to edit it. So this was one suggestion, right? So let's try the other one. So var auth equals require auth zero. That was, this is the other one, right? And then we had auth zero dot, right? So we had another option. Now this was used in a webhook. Um, but yeah, so event dot user dot email. Um, so this is interesting. So what do I do here, right? Console.log. Um, um, event dot client dot. Ah, interesting. So this would be HTTPS liquid guide at .com, and this would be event dot that's not possible event dot clients not on there what do I have in here
use a dot. Oh. That's the clone ID. Hmm. Event. So the way this was done, it suggests that this was actually this information might be contained in this path. So if I can do it, then I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to do. Um, do get client ID in pipeline. See if we can export the pipelines or um, no, not <laughs> um, of zero. In flow. Flows. Event authentication. That's not there though, is it? Nope. That ain't there. Post login event object. Event authentication. Client ID. Event dot client dot client ID. Login flow. So that's action. Right? Yeah, that's actions. <laughs> okay. Client dot client ID. You say that's there. It'll error if it's um, let's try so because that's already in the flow i don't need to change anything there right it's in here um trigger password reset email the only challenge is here now i need to do another user so for tenant 14 we're gonna have uh, um, jasmine jones Okay, that's done that part. And none of this is, is you know, uh, if the all zero part doesn't work, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Uh, module cannot find module all zero requires that. Okay, so I can't communicate with all zero either. Require stack. Um, post registration flow auth zero module not found. Yeah, assign roles to user. So this is another part I'm going to have to deal with. Right, I'm going to have to deal with um, setting up default roles. Ah, dependencies. Okay, so I've got actions, flows, no, library, custom. Does anybody see the ability to add a dependency in there? Um, oh, no, that Dorp Dorp is <laughs> in the actual editor. <laughs> oh, see, oh, there we go. So that's how we do it. So we can add Axios, so we could, we, so we could do Axios there. That would work. Okay. Secrets test. Ah, okay. Cannot read properties of undefined client Ta da! So there's no difference in this one. This one's going to fail in the exact same way.
So there is no... I mean, I know I can get around this by putting the, the, the client ID in there, but... Secrets. I can do all sorts of stuff in here, but I mean, it's not a connection because that is. Secrets client ID. I wonder if I have to set it in there then. It does mean that I probably need to. Probably we need. Import. Building a uh, quick screen for secrets because then I can put a screen up with a microphone. I do not want to leak. I do not want to have to worry about having to recreate. Um, That should work. So if I go to secrets, does that show anything? Okay, it does not. Okay, so I can put that in here and then I can do event.secrets.client ID. Is that a default value? I don't think it is. Or is not a function. that because oh you actually got that maybe that is default or maybe, maybe it's just empty but it definitely said that that isn't request change password email So for that, what we'd have to do is npm auth0. So we want to go and look at this library. Docs site. That's not really what I wanted. I want the package. I want to know what the package does. Auth0. Um, AngularJS, Express, ExpressJS, Node, Tet API endpoints. I don't want that. Let's go back and see. Node of zero.
client ID, client secret, new authentication client, new management client. So I think it's the management client that triggers um, triggers this piece. It's not. I don't think it's that. I think it's management that triggers this piece. Um, management client. I want a class lookup for that. Management client. Here we go. API reference. There we go. Constructors. There are properties, management client base. Uh, to Management client base. I'm not in the mood to understand TypeScript and stuff today, but abstract class, public read only. But that's not how it's done there. I don't get that. So they're creating a new management client, passing in the parameters, and then they're assigned roles to user. I'm not particularly caring about that. I just need to have a method look up. Because according to this, there's no, <laughs> there's no methods on management client here. More examples, here we go. Paginate through a list of users in the management client. Import users from a JSON file. Update users metadata. That I will need to do, but I'm, I'm doing that through the other side. Oh, hold on. Do I? So, it's in here right now. So what I did is I created the all zero registry outside of my application layer, right? Because the all zero registry right now it's in my tenant management piece, but I would pull this in as an all zero specific piece because the the management application, the, the actual application. Um, hi, Mitercore, how are you doing? Um, the management application has users, but it does not know about all zero. And that's something I want to keep in place, right? Roles, etc. That's fine. Things can be, you know, but uh, I want to keep Auth0 away from that piece because then I'm not um, tied to Auth0. So for anyone joining who hasn't been here before, um, I am currently working on, I, I generally work on a single app at a time. Um, I may jump back and forth with some bot development in the, in the next couple of weeks. I've been working with some, um, trying to get my bot up and running again. Nothing fancy, but making sure that's there. Uh, but right now I'm working on the foundations of a new application I'm trying to build to do agile project management. Um, I have some opinions on how to do that. And uh, I'm trying to build my own system. Um, the stream's always, I'm always open to comments or suggestions. Um, obviously, as long as they're polite. <laughs> um, and I'm always trying to learn. You know, I've been doing this for a while, but it doesn't mean I'm, I'm an expert. Any, anything I, you see on the stream just means I'm trying to work my way through and figure out the best way of doing some of these things. 
I have chosen Kafka. Um, so in this event, in this case, um, Kafka is... I'm using Kafka kind of as a... I don't want to use the word domain events, but I'm kind of publishing events out of there to tell me things have happened in my system. I kind of like using Kafka um, because it doesn't require... Um, well, let me change that up. I've used things like in service bus and mass transit in the past to do um, messaging between applications. What I've found them to be is very specific or, or, or targeted. Um, and a couple of years ago, I worked on a project where um, I needed to tell multiple systems at once, and they were actually dis they were disconnected systems. Um, well. They will be. They they were when we introduced Kafka. They were not at the time. They were querying from each other's databases. But those systems each need to know about this information. So um, I picked up Kafka to allow me to publish this thing changed in the system of truth and the other systems take that data and do what they want with it rather than being opinionated about what they're doing with it. So if, if I go to message bus stuff, I am saying, hey, Create a user, do this, do that. I'm being opinionated from one system to another about how to do that because I'm telling it to do something. Whereas with Kafka, I'm presenting, here's what did happen. If you care, pick it up. And also Kafka gives you that disconnected nature and those events don't just go away, right? They don't just go off. If no one's listening to them, they're still there. You can retain them. And that's, that's really great for getting the system up and running and for that resilience. Hopefully that answers. Uh, Nats.io. That's all right. Nats.io. Built to, into Nats server. Does Nats stand for something there? I've not seen Nats before. Replay policies and poor old decoupling between publishers and subscribers. Yeah, same same challenges. Um, you know, as I go forward, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that other platforms, other th other tools aren't going to be used. Right, connective technology that powers modern distributed systems. It's much easier to run this. Yeah. After after several years of working with Kafka, I'm I'm comfortable with the basics of Kafka. I don't consider myself an expert at Kafka because I still think there's some things that there's one piece and kind of why I'm streaming this. There's one piece of using Kafka that people will demonstrate but never explain. And that is an event. Because I think I, I think, I do not know, I think people are scared of saying what an event actually is. Or it's specific to a system, right? So few people actually put meat on the bone and such around what an event actually looks like, including Kafka, including Confluent, right? It's, it's, it's like we publish events. What What is an event? How do I publish these? What do I do with these? Like, how do I publish these events effectively? What does, you know, there's, there's some missing pieces in the way. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what works for you, right? My, my true belief of software is that um, it is what works for you. So if you can build a system, you can understand it, you can work in it, you're comfortable working in it, it's fine. So if, if I publish what I call an event and it makes sense to me, great. People don't often put much definition around these things, so. Huh. I will I will save this for later. I've not I've not seen Nats before. That is It's very strange. What is it Java based? Is it like I noticed that everything is kind of agnostic of 
Uh, uh, Rose function. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not really. I'm not going to get too downside. Don't talk about that. Yeah. Go based. Okay. So it's probably fast as well. Yeah. So that is uh that will be a for later. Single binary for me. Cool. I will. Uh, I will definitely check it out. Thank you for the, uh, the suggestion. Um, again, in Kafka. You know, I've I've spent years tinkering with Kafka, working with Kafka. I've had many conversations about how to use it effectively and what what we think it should do. And I've seen that Kafka itself, Confluent itself, has kind of pivoted towards that message bus style of using Kafka. Right. You know, sending commands across topics. Um, which I still don't think fits very well with topics. I think to use Kafka as a message bus is kind of um, not what it was made for. Um, so, you know, but I have put structure around for myself. I'm not using other third party libraries other than the Confluent libraries for interacting with Kafka. So I've built up some some libraries in here as part of that. So another option I have available, being that it's the management client, right? This is the management client, right? I have authenticated as a management user with this to be able to do this, right? This should be a KV store and object store. Nice. <laughs> right now that need by me is being met by console. So I'm using console um, plus um, Ocelot to um, provide an API gateway and console actually provides the, the key value store in there. So the only need I have for KV, KV store right now is Ocelot, is, is, is console because it is storing the configuration for Ocelot um, and allowing me to do um, um, the API gateway. A lot of this stuff is very new to me and I've not actually used some of this stuff in production because I've never had the chance. So again, my entire approach to software development is I should be able to change it quickly. I should be able to rip it out if I want to. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, find that later. So this is my registered new user, right? So I'm sending up the new user, which is great. And then I have an update user, uh, update user because this is going to allow me to uh, add the new tenants in. So if I register the same user, I go and pull the tenants. And if it's another tenant being added, then I add that into the list of available tenants. And I, I don't set the current tenant, which is probably, I should probably set the user metadata there. Um, Pass me authentication. What I'm thinking about is instead of using the workflow on the other side, I have the API here rather than trying to work on trying to figure out how to get the the client to do that. I can trigger the same email from this, I would, would imagine. So if it goes to the auth zero docs, documentation, I do not want to talk to your bot, APIs, nope, management API explorer. Please don't be logged in. So I can email, email, emails, update email, configure email, email templates. Can I trigger hooks, keys, logs, user blocks? Generate new 
how they it uses link to user get creates an authentication method for given user. There's gotta be a way of doing it in here. Tickets, no. Create a password change ticket. Is that what I want? Create an email verify, create a ticket to verify your email address. Our default email form can address the requirements of most applications. Sometimes however, you may require more flexibility. Custom redirect to URLs based on user or tenant, different email templates per application tenant. Application email should be sent to every user for which the email verify property is false. Then welcome email using the API password. You can create a password change ticket using the auth your management API. Then send the password change ticket URL in an email to the user. When the user clicks the link, they will prompted to reset their password through universal login flow. See, realistically, what I want is I want a callback. I'd like a callback to my application when they verify. That would probably be simpler. I still need to change the email. I still don't know the password. Um... Because right now I set the password, right? You can't you can't send but it's a new user, right? So I send password as a random GUID, right? You can't create a user in the Auth0 API without a password. Um if I do users create a user. Verify email. So I can say verify email equals false. <laughs> See that um, email verified equals true, right? I don't care about email verification because they're going to click the link to do what I need anyway. So. But I can't provide, even if I do email verification, right? Um, tickets, create an email verification ticket. I can't provide a callback. Include email and redirect. Unless I can set up a flow over here, right? So let's go to this library. Let's go to the flows, policies, registration. Let's remove that. Remove. Apply. Library. That's not going to do what I want, right? That, that trigger password email is not going to do what I want. Trigger password reset email. Um, yeah, the reason I'm the reason I'm looking so deeply into this right now is because again, I do want to change up my flow, right? I do not want to establish my tenant, publish that that Kafka message for tenant created, set up other pieces of the system before the user has confirmed that they actually are a user and they are logging into the system. But that being said, if they're logging in, they expect to see something, and if I'm triggering the event to do things then I have a deep eventual consistency problem in so much as if I, the more systems I add, the slower that 
could potentially be to get all up and running. So my UI, my API is going to have to deal with um, unavailable. Please check back. Is that an acceptable flow? Or would I want them to log straight in to the application when they've registered? I don't I don't see uh in off zero I do not see there is no way in the create a user to reset the password. So you can't say, hey, here's his default password, reset it on first login. But I don't get that. And I suppose, I suppose the idea is that I, I, I capture the password. I don't like doing that. So realistically, what I should do here is change my, that's actually, do I have any changes pending? <laughs> I do. Alter your registry, get tickets list uh, updated list uh, I need to merge all these down or decide what I'm going to do uh, create a new branch or to actually begin work so realistically what I'm doing here is I am changing this to have required max length 355 public string password So I don't like this. This puts a little wrinkle in the way I want to work with things. And so much as I do not want to have to pass the password around. So this kind of forces me to do it. I'm just waiting for the ad to be over before I continue because it's uh I do want to give the chance for people to still see what I'm doing where possible. Okay, so if I take the user password in as part of the registration piece, right? So when I go into post, I now have to pass this down into my workflow, which is fine. I think I just heard a... Uh, Puppy's crying. Maybe time to uh, take a quick break. I apologize. Um, 
part of my my being able to stream in the mornings is that I have two puppies and uh, they sometimes need to go out. So I will be right back.
Okay, I am back. My apologies. Okay, so I need to. So I created this, not a pattern, um, to try and avoid using multiple handlers, request uh, handlers, or command handlers rather, um, from chaining them together. So the workflow would be triggered and the workflow would do the, the multiple calls. But I now need to put this in here. Um, confirm password, yeah. And now my endpoint is going to have to pass those down, right? Come on. <laughs> Uh, request not confirm password. <laughs> Relying upon Copilot to save me keystrokes. Um, now again, I don't have to pass this down into register new tenant. I don't now. If I made register new tenant kind of the trigger, and it was responsible for doing everything else, like okay, now create the user, do this, 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 this. I have to pass this entire object down to that thing, right? Um, whereas what I do is I create a specific um message inside of registry tenant that's specific to it and I do the same for register user. Um I can also put guard in here now to say if the passwords don't match then return if I wanted to. Um which means that this workflow is reusable overall. Whether that's a thing I want or not, I don't know. Um the challenge here is the actual it's a, it's a local event. Right. User dot password. Um, request uh, parameters dot password. Right. Um, I would guard them. I wouldn't pass that down. Right. This doesn't need to go down there because this would be confirmed at this stage. Right. So um, if uh, request dot password not equal to confirm password, um, passwords do not match. We'll just guard that out there. Not make it a concern of the, the workflow. So the only other thing I need to do is in my tenant user was registered event, I need to add the actual user password picked. I'm not going to store it. it. This event is not going to be stored in any sort of uh, messaging. Um, that doesn't matter. It still wants that, yeah, because it's, yeah. Guaranteeing it won't be nullable on it, in it property. Um, so now that is handled in here, right? The second is it not registered new user? No, it's not. It's registered. It's this is my provider, right? My reg user registry. User registry is uh, password. And again, I'm not I'm not storing this, so I don't really have any challenges here. Um, user dot password uh, notification. That's notification dot password. Um, infrastructure. Did I register that in the wrong place? And the reason I'm referring to this as a prototype still is because, oh, well, it's coming out of the prototyping phase because I've got most of the questions answered. This is kind of the last one, really, um, of the actual core questions. Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure this out so that I can move forward at a decent speed when I'm actually building the application. Um, and build the right stories. I, I went to write the story to do this piece and realized I still had more questions than I had answers and it would take me longer to write the story, then try and work on the story as an actual story than it would be to try and prototype out this piece enough to, to be able to say, yeah, I can do that, change the workflow, and then um, consider you know, what do I want to happen here? What should happen here? Then can I piece that back together and make that the actual story? 
So now with that in place, um, string password. That should go there. And that's now password. I'm not too worried about these methods being, you know, lots of parameters. I don't need to create objects for these. Um, this register user with provider is the method that on my user registry of zero happens to be that. It's not really going to. If it grew any further, then yeah, probably a new parameter object inside. Um, but the argument is needed. Um, this password, this password, I don't care. Some hard coded strings in here that I probably don't want to deal with eventually. Okay. So now that will allow me to set the email, the password at the same time I create the user. Um, new branch, um, or zero, um, confirmation path. Um, password into our So that looks like the intended way of doing things, right? Um, just purely based upon the way the API reads from all zero's perspective. They don't expect you to say, hey, change your password on the first login, which I suppose would be dangerous. Um, so I set the password and uh, now I still can't get a callback on verify. That would be my next challenge. Can I get it to call me back on the verify? And also I need to do a little bit more there. Um, that is not sufficient. I can empty, I can actually set no password. Auth0 will crash then, but I, cannot, but I shouldn't allow that to go through. So I do need to address that. Um, sorry. Um, so back to auth0, so what I'm trying to do is this register with auth0 is fine here. It's this part I don't want to do here. I want to kind of do it as a step of, um, confirm. So I don't care if I have the the verify, but confirm should publish that tenant created. That way, when they click that link, it confirms the account. It kicks into gear the the events that say, "Hey, establish what it means to be a tenant." And do I know that? <laughs> And if the user is an existing user, I add the tenant to their list of tenants. I don't, I'm not going to see a verification email in that, in that respect. The question becomes, is it acceptable to allocate resources on before you've actually verified someone? And if you have verified them, do you find that event sooner? What would you do? Because tenant was registered is a mediator event that I publish so that I'm disconnected. So again, my tenant creates my create tenant path is creating 
in the application layer is creating the tenant as I know about it, right? It doesn't care about anybody else. And then it turns around and publishes the fact that this tenant was created. Um, probably lacking a bit of information there, but I could query more in here, right? I could still go and pull more information at this point. I don't need to be opinionated in the event. I can just publish tenant identifier on that notification. I don't need to publish company name there. I can pull all that information. But here, I don't know about the user. This decision is kind of fundamental to the way the application starts up. So it's kind of, it is something that I do, I don't want to just dismiss and move on from because pulling this apart later, although not impossible, will be harder than other things, right? Because again, I've prototyped out, okay, here's the event, right? I publish, this is actually publishing to Kafka, the event publisher here is publishing to Kafka. Um, this publishes the tenant created event. Um, cause again, internally it was, the tenant was registered now I'm publishing tenant created, right? Um, individual systems do not need to care about the users right this second. Um, but in terms of prototype, the consumer over here listens to that event and establishes resources, right? And that would be the way it would go, right? Individual application pieces, stacks would handle even if they're using Couchbase, right? <laughs> if they're using, um, SQL Server or whatever. I, I, like I could put the, I put the teams in. Um, this is an API unto itself right now. It doesn't do any eventing. It has no hooks into the rest of the system. It's just kind of a thing. Um, so the general concept here is that I'm going to have configure teams. Teams are groups of people. People work on um, boards. Collaborations are a separate concept. Collaborations are where multiple teams are working together on tickets. Those tickets appear in the individual boards um, and can be passed between teams. So if I'm, this is where I differ in how I'm trying to do the agile uh, flow, right? If there's a piece of work that is assigned to me right now, and I want that piece of work. I need that piece of work to be handled by somebody else. Or I need something about this piece of work to be handled by someone else. Then we are collaborating, right? That piece of work should not be distinct from my piece of work because I need it. So I pass that ticket over to another person on another team. We are collaborating and all collaborative work can be viewed independent of the individual team boards. So we can see, hey, Here's the um, in progress collaboration work. That's kind of what I'm aiming towards. Um, so is this Is adding the password the only thing I need to do here? Is what I've got right now actually going to be the right way to do this? Because it means that when that user turns around and goes to log in, right? So if I put the password verification back, the email verification back, branding, email templates, verification, template enabled. Eh. That would be pretty useful. <laughs> uh, configuring the redirect URL. The redirect to URL is an optional destination to redirect users to after the relevant action has was performed. With universal login content, you can provide a URL to which users are redirected after they reset a password or to assess a success indicating a message to the URL to learn about these two practices and email templates. So. Huh. 
<laughs> okay. But it, it's still, even with that being there all the time, right? Even that, if I'd have read the actual confirmation email, that would have helped me there a little bit in that I would have kind of had my answer because that's realistically what I need to do, right? When I verify the email, call back. In the event the user exists in the system already, I will add the new tenant to them. There is no confirmation email. They are already confirmed. So in that event, what do I do? And that's the, tr that's the tricky part, right? And in reality, what that means is I can't disconnect the act of establishing the client, establishing the tenant from the registration of the, the tenant, right? I have to say, okay, the tenant is registered. The user is, you know, we're, we're often doing the user, right? Now I could tie it to an event, right? Because obviously... I could say, I could kind of create some sort of saga, which would be yet more prototyping. And the saga would be, okay, I can create a tenant if the user is established already and now the, the tenant has been registered. Or I can create a tenant. Well, no, I can create a tenant when the, the tenant is registered and the user is good. Right. So in the case of a non-verified user, that user is good comes back when they click the link, which triggers the separate part of the process. In the event of them being a user, I would fire that event now. Right. And I would have to have a saga style thing where both events have to have happened for me to actually populate the resources. If I if I put this into the cloud and I'm establishing tenants and you can just go up and you know you can say okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new tenant and password is um, um, Jasmine J right um, and you can you can configure that and you can fire that off you know as many times as you want. And every single time it allocates all those resources, it, it creates database connections, it creates database connections, it creates uh, collections in, in, in things, it establishes data um, templates of, of, of all manner of things. That's an expensive process. So... Okay. So let's have a look. I, saga pattern. So if anyone's not familiar with saga pattern, a, a saga is a long running process, and that's exactly what this is essentially. It, or it's an, it's a process. It's a, a um, essentially out of sequence but an, an unknown amount of time, right? So, um, I don't think Mediator has this saga. That, that's going to be a challenge. Real project. Um, so, the way you might write this is, let's go to Linkpad. I need to update my license for Linkpad. We get eight. The way you might write something like this is I might have public class um, um, tenant creation saga, right? And it is kind of I listen or for or I handle um, tenant um, registered I handle user confirmed and public void handle 
tenant registered and tenant registered. User confirmed. Right. Now, you need some sort of backing to it, right? Because you need to store the state. It, it needs to retain its state in between. So I'd have um, um, public, public bool um, is registered and public bool is confirmed. And this would basically say set, um, um, no, uh, is registered equals true, but not right now. And then store the state. Because again, in, in an actual saga, you may not get the events in the right order. And, and this is, this is something I dealt with in service bus, right? Is because the bus can be slower in parts if it's not scaled up appropriately or whatever, the events might, and in this instance, I'm working with events in a local system, but in the distributed system, pieces may be down, pieces may not be producing their events. You can't guarantee the order in which they are going to re be received, right? Um, so, yeah, Saga is a way more involved pattern. Um, but it's kind of what I want, right? Because I, I, again, I don't want to allocate those resources or, or risk publishing that event to say this is happening unless I am confident um, it's worth it, right? So for a registered user who has confirmed, then it's more likely, you know, I'm going to have to clean up tenants, right? Tenant, there's going to have to be an expiration. There's going to have to be all that sort of stuff. Those stories will have to come around, right? You do not want to leave unallocated resource or allocated resources being unused, um, and especially if you're considering how it uh, comes to cloud computing. But ultimately, here, um, this would be check, right? I I would check to see. Um, is it good? And private void check, and if is registered, and is confirmed. I should make that is confirmed there, just for right. Then I want to publish tenant created, right? Um, then I want to publish my event. This way, I can still gate this properly. However. I don't think design pattern saga number 12. That's just a design pattern, right? Um, sagas. But again, I get into the world of persistence. I get into the world of building something to do this. And the fact that it doesn't naturally come with what I'm doing suggests that I probably shouldn't do it. Because what happens is to do, to do the saga thing, what I'd have to do is have something that, so I handle these events, right? I can't just hook in um, mediator. I'm going to have to have something that says, okay, oh, by the way, these are keyed upon a certain thing, right? So there's a key to this saga. Uh, and the key is the tenant ID or the user ID or whatever it is, combination. And um, yeah. That's 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 the big challenge there. You have to have something for it to be keyed on because obviously it's going to store its state in the database. It's going to recover that state, and then when it when it sees an event happen, 
it's going to say, oh, do I have a saga for this thing um, based upon this key? And if it does, then it's going to um, restore the state and the saga you get will have its state correctly set. Um, so you're kind of um, re-establishing. So there's a lot more involved to do it that way. Event sourcing would be a thing as well. Um, event sourcing is something that I do not feel comfortable getting into at this point, right? My 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 application development paths are still pretty traditional in terms of the tools I'm using, and I can learn new things. But this project should be about productivity first. And if I find a tool that fits and I can apply it, then I will use it, All right? Well, the saga is about chore like, like so choreography-based saga, right? I'm trying to choreograph these events to fit them into this, this thing. $395 per person for a course on an online boot camp. So it's not even one on one. Ouch. So yes, I think I think that is my answer. So what would happen in, in the case of um what would happen in the case of this? I think do I want to introduce a saga? So um, what it would do is in here, instead of tenant user was registered and tenant was registered, right? I would, uh, instead of the, sorry, the um, subscribers, instead of doing this or this, I would um, pull the saga. Right. So there'd be um I saga um how would they well how would he term that? The Yeah. Um something like that. Either way, we do something like that and then we'd um Do something that, that fetched that that saga by its ID, um, and actually because this tenant user was registered, we have the tenant, so we do know we have a synchronizing ID, which is the tenant, and that way, um, what I do is disconnect. This tenant created this. This tenant created ends up in. Um, the saga, right? It becomes part of the saga piece. And then the big challenge here is yeah. The, the big challenge there would be trying to figure out that ordering because this obviously now has that does the user exist um so i'd have to put in a is user registered if it is then i'd publish the event if it's not then um the callback would do that second part um yeah so anyway unfortunately that is all i can do today i do have to finish up here um if you're i mean it says i've got eight viewers um I appreciate the looking. Um, if you have any questions, you're, you're more than welcome to ask. Um, I do not mind being wrong about this stuff. I do not mind being um, shown new ways um, or being told, you know, this is terrible what you're doing. Um, as long as you're able to say, hey, 
here's how I would do it and uh, we can have a logical discussion about it. So if you're interested, you can join the Discord. Um, you know, more than welcome to, to, to post in there any questions or opinions on what you've seen today. Um, I will return probably tomorrow um, where I might actually now pick up that saga thing because I don't know if it exists. Um, I will do a bit of research to figure out if, if it actually does indeed exist. I might do some prep work to see if I can get a basic uh, implementation working. The challenge will be how to back it and, and all those things. Um, um, what, a, what a word back it with um, is, you know, I guess, messy, the implementation. But tomorrow I'll probably start on implementing that to try and get this workflow um, refined. Put in that callback, verify that I establish the tenant, and when that piece is working, then I will move forward with... Um, With building out those stories because then my stories become more about okay i am registering the, the customer i am establishing you know because i've got to kind of figure out the order in what which i want these things because my mvp is pretty far away but yes thank you for joining me um appreciate your your viewing and uh yeah i will be back tomorrow uh around the same time and uh Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.